Number 9 asks us to solve for y when 3 over y plus 7 over y is equal to 5. Now remember, in order to solve for a rational expression, solve for the variable and rational expression, the best thing to do is to get rid of the fraction. And since we only have the denominator of y, because this 5 is 5 over 1, if you recall, then I can multiply both sides by y. And that will um, effectively get rid of these denominators. Because 3 times y is 3y, and y over y is cancel. So it's 3 is left there, plus y times 7 is 7y, and those y's cancel, and I'm left with just the 7 there. And that's equal to 5 times y, or 5y. Combining like terms, I get 10 is equal to 5y. And uh, in this case, I will divide by 5 both sides, and I get y is equal to 2. Now, is that a valid? Here's our original expression. We Remember, we have to ask ourselves, is this a valid value? Is 2 valid for y? Well, it doesn't, um, 7 over y, sorry, is equal to 5. It doesn't violate any domain restrictions because in this one, with this equation, y cannot equal 0, and 2 is definitely not 0. So then we ask ourselves, does 3 over 2 plus 7 over 2, does that equal 5? Well, let's try it out. Um, one really easy way is to just turn this into decimals, and I know I don't like turning things into decimals, but since this is a rational number, and it's a repeating, not repeating, it's a terminating decimal, it's, it's okay here, because this isn't an approximation, it's exact. Um, so 3 halves is 1.5, and 7 halves is 2.5. Now the question is, does that equal 5? Well, yeah, uh, 1 plus 2... Oh, I made a mistake, didn't I? It's not 2.5. It's not 2.5. 7 halves is 3.5. So 1 plus 3 is 4 plus 0.5 times 0.5 is 1. And yes, 5, in fact, does equal 5. Things got a little hairy there when my brush size changed. There we go. There we go. All right, so we just checked. On that one, we just checked for um, check the value just to make sure it worked. Let's look at number 11. 11 says 1 half is equal to z minus 5 over z plus 1. Okay. Do I have any domain restrictions here? Yes, as a matter of fact, z cannot be. If z plus 1 is 0, that would be bad. z plus 1 cannot be 0. Well, by subtracting 1 from both sides, we know that z cannot be negative 1, which means that our domain, our domain for this particular equation here, if it were if we had a domain for it it would be that z could be from negative infinity to negative 1 but not include it that's why we use that um, open that open uh, parenthesis well the soft parenthesis and then it's the union of that the union from negative infinity to negative 1 with negative one soft parenthesis here to positive infinity and get used to understanding this notation you may not have to write it but you do have to understand it so that you can use it later on um, okay here our, our common denominator is um, the LCD here is two times z plus one so when I multiply it here, this number times 2z plus 1, that's a z, 
And this one here times two. Well, let's go ahead and get rid of that. Two times z plus one. Then the twos cancel here, and I'm left with z plus one. And if you want to say that's times one, we can do that for now. But here the z plus ones cancel, and this is two times z minus five. Um, using the distributive property, I multiply that one across, and I get z plus one on this side. And again, using the distributive property, I multiply the two across, and I get two z minus 10 on that side. Now it's just a matter of getting the variable term by itself. I can do that by subtracting z from both sides. And I can also add 10 to both sides. In this case, my z's will cancel. And I'll just be left with 1 plus 10 here, which is 11, equals. And in this case, my 10s cancel here. And I'm left with z, 2z minus z, which is just z. So z is equal to 11. Boy, things get a little weird the way I write. I have to learn how to not do that. So my domain restriction, does this fall within my domain restric restriction? Can z be equal to 11? And yes, in fact, it can because um, 11 is not negative 1. So we're good there. Let's try one more on this video before we move on to the next thing. Let's see, I already used that space. Let's try this space right here. Let's do 13. Take a look at 13. 13 says, well, let's do this. Let's call this one 13. 13 says 3 over y plus 1 is equal to 2 over y minus 3. Let's try something a little bit different this time. Knowing that we have a proportion set up here, let's use our cross products. Because remember, if I have two fractions that are equal, then the cross products, 4 times 3 is 12, 2 times 6 is also 12. The cross products are also equal. So in this case, I'll take the 2 and multiply it by the y plus 1. So it's 2 times the quantity y plus 1. And 3 times the quantity, set that equal to 3 times the quantity, 3 times the quantity y minus 3. I just used my cross products here. And remember, my domain restrictions, in this case, in order to not be 0 here or here, y cannot be negative 1 or 3. That's important to remember. So let's see if we have any domain restrictions there. This is number 13, OK. Um, using the distributive property, I multiply the 2 across the addition there. So 2 times y is 2y. 2 times positive 1 is a positive 2. And then I will set that equal to, set that equal to, let's do this in green. 3 times y pl um, plus, you know, whatever 3 times negative 3 is. So 3 times y is 3y. Three, 3 times a negative 3 is negative 9. And again, from here, we're just now using our proper tools in order to um, solve for y. I can subtract 2y from both sides. I can also add 9 to both sides. And what happens is these cancel, 2 plus 9 is 11. Uh, these cancel, 3y minus 2y is just 1y. So y is equal to 11 there as well. All right, that's three more problems in just about 10 minutes. So we're going to go ahead and stop this one. And I'll do three more starting with number 15 on the next video.